Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, public regular meeting of the Dieppe City Council on October 23rd, 2017. Dear colleagues, uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Welcome, everyone. Our representative of the RCMP will not be here this evening, but if you have any complaints, we will pass them on. There's been changes in personnel. The inspector has responsibilities uh, managing the region at the moment. So that's the whole province, actually. We have a quorum. Mr. Mr. I you hit your mic by error. Are there any conflicts of interest? No. For the adoption of the agenda, Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier. We have an addition to the agenda. If everybody is in agreement, you received a copy. So we're going to add item 10.3.1. It's a request of a permanent for the Army Cadets. 3006 in Dieppe, 10.3.1. All those in favor of the adoption of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying, I got three mad at me. The agenda is adopted as presented so with one addition. 7.1, inquiries by council members for Kodiak Regional Police. So Mr. Rana, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Mark, would you be able to check? I mentioned Belfare Street, and I received emails this weekend from people that saying that, that there was speeding in the street. So I would like to know what is happening there. We could uh, probably think about uh, installing our speed equipment. For the school kids, it would give us an idea if we had a, a speed uh, equipment to read these speeds. Any other questions for the RCMP? No? We shall continue with item 7.2, presentation, participatory budget project, presented by Judith Bourg and Mosef Lacroix. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, councillors and residents of Dieppe. I'm Judith Bourg. I'm a member of, of the volunteer group working on the participatory budget. My colleague, Mosef Lacroix, is here and uh, members of our team. This is a brief presentation to let you know what the steps we have taken up until now and the next steps, and with the collaboration of the citizens. Phase one, actually, we're in phase one, which is collective ideas. So we're trying to f get ideas from the population to see how we can transform the community. Up until now, since uh, June, up until last Friday, we received more than 185 submissions of ideas. And there are 130 different ideas. Uh, some of them are similar. And we're very happy because we received ideas from all categories, active, connected, creative, and green categories. It's very exciting because two years ago, with our 
first participatory budget, we had uh, this year we have 80 more ideas submitted. So there's been more participation since the first budget. With phase two, starting next uh, week, is the development of ideas. So we're going to have a melting of ideas that have been submitted. And then we will uh, see what we can do for next spring. So this will start uh, phase two from the end of November to March. What's interesting is that uh, the members of community get together to collaborate on a project that may see the light of day. An important part of this phase is the municipal staff who are available to inform and help residents and answer any questions. How can we participate? There are three different ways in phase two. Firstly, we have workshops on improving ideas. It's going to start next week. Anybody can attend, uh, those that have submitted ideas or those who are just interested in the process. We're going to have open forums. We're going to invite the population and we'll talk about the ideas submitted. Ideas can be added or people can ask questions of municipal staff. It's an open door approach for everyone. When will this take place? Like I mentioned, it's starting next week. From Thursday to Saturday, we decided to have different times during the day to be able to invite everybody according to their schedule. So on Thursday in the afternoon from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and in the evening from 6.30 to 8.30. On Friday, it'll be from 9.30 to noon and Saturday from 9 to noon. And it will take place at City Hall. And we're asking people to reserve so that we'll know how many people are coming. They can send an email, pbp at dieb.ca. Transportation fees will be reimbursed and also for any babysitting fees. And we decided to do it at the City Hall because it's very accessible by public transportation. So if people can let us know in advance if they're taking the public transportation, then we'll know ahead of time how many people will be here. Mosef uh, Lacroix, uh, good evening. I'm very happy to be here this evening because this is a very exciting project for the community. This is the second version. Last year, we had an enormous success. And it's important for members to do this project. We're volunteers. And Judith has worked on this project for a long time, as well as being a volunteer. Like Judith explained, uh, we received 185 ideas, and 130 are new. They're very interesting ideas. They're on the website, and I invite you to look at them. People have been implicated in this, in these uh, ideas of all four categories that we mentioned earlier. After the improvement of ideas, we're going to try to put sense into them, filter them a bit, what makes sense, and other things that maybe are not possible. The ideas that will remain will go to the next step, and that's what we'll call the citizen forum. It, that's going to be public, open to everybody, people of all ages that could come and participate so that we can have a deep, the image that we want. This forum is going to be a chance to exchange ideas. Do we have the same dreams? Uh, if yours is more exciting than mine, then I'll go into yours. So everybody is going to come with a version. I have a dream. It's somebody, something I want from my community. We'll sit all around the table, and everybody that's interested 
can come and join this group and give their ideas. We'll have people from different backgrounds and different ideas to complete the idea submitted by a particular person. So these, these assessments will be around the environment, technology, sports, recreation, etc. So for the everybody will be participating in something concrete. So this is going to take place in the field, and we're going to make sure that these ideas become a reality. This is a world cafe as well, and it'll have different dimensions. The Citizens Forum will take place uh, on a longer period of time. We're very much engaged in this. We're very committed. We don't want to take too much time in meetings because people might be less interested. So Monday, November 6th will be the first meeting and those that can't uh, attend that meeting will have others uh, later on. And we'll have one meeting per week. So if one person misses one day, then that person can come back the next week. Once these ideas have been received, uh, when we put the meat on the skeleton, we'll have to choose. It's not always obvious because we have a, a restricted budget and it's not all the ideas that we'll see the day of light. So we'll have a citizen jury that will study these ideas to make a selection. So this jury will be chosen randomly. We don't want a person who submitted an idea that becomes a juror, for example. We want the global interest to have predominance. In this case, the idea that was submitted it should have a questionnaire attached to it, and we can choose people randomly t for this jury, people of all ages, so that we can have a little committee that will filter all these ideas. And this will take place at the end of March. This process uh, has received uh, ideas, a lot of ideas. People are very interested and want to contribute. There'll be projects that'll be filtered and chosen, then voted on. We're very proud uh, that we have received the most votes per capita, and we even beat New York. And this year, we have so much momentum that we hope that we'll have even more strategies to get the vote out and to double or triple the number of votes. We've received some comments to the effect uh, that the strategies that were put into place by the strategy that will generate a lot of ideas on which to be able to vote on. So people for, for, for activities for all ages of people in Dieppe. So all the information was put on the website, dieppe.ca, and so for any question, there was a page created for the project. People like it very much, uh, so if you have a Facebook account, you can uh, go look at this and pass the message around. And we want to thank uh, the councillors because it was their idea. We, there have been uh, debates and Dieppe was, had the conviction and openness to put this into place. Last year it was a reality. We had youth participate, families, and this year we have an even more dynamic vision. This is a democracy for citizens and uh, people have received a lot of ideas. They're very excited to present them. The team of volunteers want to thank the council. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions from councillors? Mr. LeBlanc. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, citizens, to take part in this process of the participatory budget project, the second phase. The workshop of, for improving ideas on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday here at City Hall. Are those concrete ideas or just a, a beginning of a thought? The, at the last phase, we had a presentation where projects were concrete that we could use for voting. But I don't think we saw improvement workshops before the projects had reached maturity. Is this the same process? The people that come here on Thursday, November 2nd, what can they expect? If I understood your question, these, this workshop for improving ideas is a way to filter the ideas. When citizens are there and uh, staff, is to see if this idea is feasible. So at this stage, the idea goes through the, f the question, is it feasible or not? Uh, the staff will be there. That's how I understand this improvement of ideas. Then there'll be a citizen forum, and then we'll, have, we'll develop the ideas. It'll be on the feasibility, financial, execution, and the impacts, repercussions, etc. So that's when the people will build the skeleton and build the idea to put it into execution. So here we're just going to filter the ideas, uh, talk about them. And it's not up to us to reject ideas, but it's for everybody to have their opinion and express themselves so that it's a transparent process. So it's not only the staff or the elected officials that will vote on this. Then we're going to go through the step of the mature ideas. So we're going to brainstorm? Yes, accompanied with the expertise of city staff. Thank you. Any other questions from councillors? No other question? Once, twice, three times, sold. Thank you for your presentation. We're happy to see all this activity continuing. And we're looking forward to hearing about this project. And uh, as always, we'll uh, have hands off on that aspect. It's a project for citizens, by the citizens, for the whole community, and uh, we're expecting good results as we have had in the past. And as you said, the uh, participation is increasing year after year, and hopefully we're preparing our leaders for tomorrow. Thank you. Questions by members of the public. Are there any questions? No questions. Item number nine, adoption of minutes of the regular council meeting held on October 10th, 2017. Moved by Councillor Gaudet, seconded by Councillor Cormier. The adoption, the minutes are adopted for the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded a nay. The minutes uh, of the meeting held on October 10th is adopted. 10.1, organizational performance uh, respecting public transit. 10.1.1, Mr. Melasso. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everybody. For the first file, we have, as you will remember, we bought two new buses, two new models this year. They've arrived, and they're already in operation. So the question tonight is, 
is to be constant as we did the last time that we bought uh, buses. So where we have the the exterior design to think about, we want a look that reflects uh, Kodiak Transpo. And what Diep wants uh, as an image, we have examples, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the final pro product. But staff recommends that we use a design particular for Dieppe so that the buses can be seen when they're at uh, Champlain Mall or elsewhere. So this uh, design will be used on the four buses chosen. So this is to have the support of council. Thank you. For the reading of the resolution, Mr. Gadet, as a member of uh, the Kodiak Committee. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council adopt the unique exterior design approach for DM buses. I so move. Moved by Councillor Gadet, seconded by Councillor Leblanc for the question. Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Here you're talking about an exterior design, which is unique. Is uh, there a version proposed for us? How do we take the decision? We're going to continue to think about the final design. We had two examples, maybe a third that we're thinking about. Once we have the final decision, we'll uh, pass it around to council members. Thank you. Any other question? No question. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Country reminded nay. Adopted as presented. 10.2.1 Human Resources. Mr. Balasso here. We have uh, a ratification of the collective agreement of local 4679 for a period of five years, which will and in 2021, on April 10th. So here we have uh, increases of salary increases. One point seven and two percent for the last two years, and a pension fund at a half percent as well. And negotiations, we've had uh, meetings to get more details on certain sections, the um, the work shifts, and we have uh, other information before you. So we recommend signing with the union following adoption this evening for the reading of the resolution. The Council adopt the collective agreement between the City of Dieppe and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 4679, for the April 11th, 2016 period to April 10th, 2021, and authorize the municipal sign officers to sign said agreement. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Brideau for the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. The resolution is adopted as presented. I would like to take a minute to thank municipal staff to have reached this agreement. Our director and her team, thank you for your excellent work. Next item, 10.2.2, salary adjustment for non-union personnel. So here, following the agreement that we just authorized, people that are non-union, uh, they have the same salary since uh, January 2015. We've made a new revision, it goes back from 2012, and we're trying to increase it to reflect uh, the cost of life, and uh, so it uh, the salaries would be the same as unionized workers. 
So we recommend proceeding with the same increase for, for a period of five years, three years at 1.75%, and the last two years, a 2% 2 increase annually to reflect what the union has received. When we talk of 0.5%, uh, the uh, union receives a pension fund and non-union workers had this contribution already in place, so the pension fund is maximized. So we want to main it at, maintain it at this time, as the union did for many years. So it will, it's to create fairness between all employees. And this is for recommendation by the council tonight. Mr. Alain, for the reading. The council adopt the chief administrative officer's recommendation to apply an annual increase of 1.75% to the salary brackets of non-union positions for three consecutive years starting January 1st for 2016, 17, and 18, and of 2% for two consecutive years starting January January 1st for 2019 and 2020. An additional increase of 0.5% will also be applied starting October 23rd, 2017. I so move. Moved by Councillor Alain, seconded by Councillor Cormier for the question. No question? So it's clear. All those in favor signify by saying aye, contrary, nay. The resolution 10.2.2 is adopted as presented. 10.3.1, Mr. Malaza, you have before you a request from the cadets of Diep, uh, who will have a competition on November 18th. The, the bylaw, is, which is in place, uh, has to be changed to organize this biathlon, and there are three conditions for the organization of this defect. We have to uh, increase the safety for uh, the volunteers. Uh, we need uh, the fees. And thirdly, we need proof of insurance uh, for the event. So this is uh, basic uh, for this organization so that everybody is safe in uh, the Rotary Park on November 18th. And if the weather's bad, it will take place on the 19th. Thank you for the reading of the resolution, Mr. Bedivo. Thank you, Your Worship. The council gives a permit uh, for the Army Cadets uh, 3060 up at the Rotary Park in conformity with Section 3 of the bylaw of the City of Dieppe to prevent accidents and so that this organization give us a proof of insurance for this activity and uh, disperse a fees according to policies and give us a plan of the site showing the position of uh, people that would ensure secret sa safety measures put into place to ensure that the people and the animals are present on the in the park will be safe and also for the protection of property i so move uh, Moved by Councillor Brideau, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. For the question, all those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye, contrary, mind it, nay. The resolution is adopted as presented. Number 11.1, bylaw number C24, authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close portions of Normandie Street. Mr. Melanson. This is a reading in, in its entirety and a third reading by title. This is a, a street, Normandie has a, a connection on Gillette. 
So this parcel will be developed for this, for the reading in its entirety, Mrs. Arsenault. Thank you, Your Worship. By law number C24, by law authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close portions of Nomadi Street. Be it enacted by the Municipal Council of the City of Dieppe, whereas Section 187 of the Municipalities Act, Chapter M22 of the Statutes of New Brunswick, 1973, authorize the C Dieppe City Council by bylaw to close any or any portion of any highway within the municipality. And whereas it is deemed in the public interest that portions of Namaji Street identified as parcels 17A and 17F, as described in Schedule A hereto attached, be permanently closed to all forms of vehicular traffic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that from the date of ordaining and passing of this bylaw, the portions of the public street herein mentioned and specified in Schedule A are permanently closed. I so move uh, in its entirety. Moved by Councillor Asano, seconded by Councillor Gadet for the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary-minded, nay. Accepted uh, in its uh, reading, in its entirety, third reading by title only. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number C24, a bylaw authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close portions of Normandy Street be it enacted by the Municipal Council of the City of Dieppe. I move for third reading and last uh, reading for the question. No questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye, contrary, minded, nay. By law number C24 is accepted in third reading. 11.2 by law S2 here we're still revising municipal bylaws and this one dates from 1990s uh, respecting special effects and fireworks we have six elements that are being changed uh, it's uh, by virtue of the Municipalities Act and uh, also explosives. And we want a definition for fire services, so the employees responsible. And we want more precision for the definition of fireworks, pyrotechnical effects, special effects. And uh, the... Uh, fireworks that can be dangerous uh, when the weather is very dry. And we want regulations on pyrotechnics effects. So we want to review this bylaw and amend it uh, for the future. Thank you. First reading by title only. Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number S2, a bylaw relating to fireworks and special effects pyrotechnics in the city of Dieppe. I so move uh, by, by first reading, by title only, for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, minded, nay. Bylaw number S2 is accepted by a first reading by, t by title only. We'll proceed for second reading. Bylaw number S2, a bylaw relating to fireworks and special effects pyrotechnics in the city of Dieppe. I so move in second reading by title only. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Alain for second reading by title only. All those in favor signify by saying aye, country in mind, nay. The bylaw is accepted in a th second reading by title only. Item number 12, notice of motion, a none. 
Number 13, inquiries announced by members of council, and we shall start with Councillor Alain this evening, as soon as I light up his mic. Thank you, Your Worship. I have an announcement today. It's Thursday, November 2nd at the casino. It's the Junior Achievers of New Brunswick. There are prizes this year. There are three. Uh, for this year, uh, Romeo Gauguin, he did a lot of work for the province. It's to recognize entrepreneurship. And David Hawkins uh, received it in 2015. Claude Savoie, 20, 2009. Robert Irving and Mary Jane received them. Uh, so it's good for our province, and it shows our youth that entrepreneurship is a good thing. I want to recognize Mr. Gugge. Thank you. Those are people that contribute to the, co the community in many ways, not only the jobs created, but within the community as well. Thank you. Councillor Asano. Thank you, Your Worship. I would have a question for Mr. Melanson. Angèle is not there tonight. Mrs. Spencer. For the sign that we have uh, at the city of Dieppe, it's usually lit. I think most lights are burnt. Is it something that we could check? Yes, uh, it's for us to do it. I'll send the right person to check it. Uh, tonight or tomorrow night, to make sure the lights are working. Thanks for mentioning it. Yesterday, I went to the development uh, ceremony at the, the Christa Church. It's the it's a solidarity organization that exists for 50 years. Uh, Eva Book and Kolbuk was there. They received uh, honors certificates for the volunteering they've done on, in many years, for many years. So hats off to all the volunteers who do good work in our country and elsewhere, not only within our community, but everywhere in the world. So thank you to all our volunteers. Thank you, Councillor Asano. Councillor Thibodeau, thank you, Your Worship. I have absolutely nothing to mention tonight. Thank you. Councillor Brideau. Thank you, Your Worship. I haven't got much to say, but I would like to mention that at the end of the month, we're going to celebrate Halloween for the children. Everything should finish by 8 p.m. for the youth. Safety is important for the people who are driving in the streets. There'll be a lot of little ghosts around, little monsters. So have a good evening and happy Halloween. Thank you, Councillor Cormier. Thank you, Your Worship. I have nothing to add this evening. Thank you, Councillor LeBlanc. Thank you, Your Worship. I have nothing to add tonight. Thank you. Councillor Gaudet, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to congratulate the people that did the work on Amiro Street. It's a pleasure to drive from one end to the other. It's like a, a runway for planes, and it's really pleasant driving on that street. Thank you. Yes, it's a three-step process for roads. It starts with citizens that complain that we don't do anything to fix the streets. And then when we fix them, th we get criticized because the traffic is slow. And thirdly, it's to come. It is going too fast within Dieppe streets. So that's going to be the third step. But I want to thank the city council and all other governments that, that supported our efforts to fix our streets in the last two years, last two, three years. 
when you think about uh, Amiro Street, like all of you, I receive a lot of compliments from citizens for the work that's been done these past few years. And I want to thank our engineering division to have well managed these, this work and the different contractors that worked on those streets who did a very good job. We have a few complaints, but they were rare. I encourage people to celebrate, especially the young families, to celebrate Halloween and make sure that the children brush their teeth before going to bed at night. With all that sugar they're going to eat. Thank you and have a good evening, everyone.